As an educator in the technological age in the 21st century, it's best that we make knowledge available to our students in ways that go beyond the book and beyond the lecture class in the classroom. Making videos is a very effective way of implanting that knowledge into our students that can be available anytime, anywhere, all you need is access to the internet. What you're going to need to get started to make your own lecture videos is you need to have some lecture slides prepared. You probably already have that if you're an educator. Now you can use PowerPoint or any other presentation software. All you have to be able to do is to, to convert those PowerPoint slides or whatever presentation slides you have into images. You're also going to need to download and install some free software. In this video I'm going to be using iMovie and an MPEG uh, converter called MPEG Stream Clip. Uh, so go ahead and download those first before you get started and you'll be able to follow along easily. To produce the highest quality video, I recommend writing a script, literally stating out exactly what you're going to say, when you're going to say it for every single lecture slide. And I, I've also found that recommend, I recommend that splitting up or chunking your writing into small parts. So if you make a mistake, you don't have to re-record in a large, large uh, portion of, of what you're going to talk about. All right, your first task is to convert these slides into pictures. So if you're using PowerPoints, you can click on the file menu, uh, go down and save as pictures. All right, then you're going to want to title what your picture is going to be called. I recommend saving them on the desktop because you're going to throw them away later. You want to change the format to JPEG. You could probably change it to some other things, but I use JPEG, it's easiest. And then click the options button. When you click the option, Options button, here's what you're going to see. And you're going to want to click Save Every Slide. That way you don't have to do this a whole bunch of times. And then I recommend changing the width and height to 800 and 600. This really enhances the quality uh, at, for the end product. Click OK, and then it'll do it for you. Another window pops up. Click Save, and your pictures will be saved. I saved mine on my desktop. Once it's finished, this little window will pop up, and then you just click OK, and then we can begin the next step. The next step is to start our project in iMovie. So go ahead and open up iMovie and click New Project. You want to name your project. You want to change the aspect ratio to standard 4x3. That's typically what presentations software provides. Uh, you want to decide how your transitions change from slide to slide. I don't use any personally. I like it more simple. And click Create, and then you'll, you'll have a new project. And this is what your new project will look like. Before we get started, I want to change one thing. Go under File and click Project Properties. What you want to do is change the initial photo placement to fit to frame. That's just going to keep it just like a regular slide, not do any fancy crazy stuff with it. That's what the Ken Burns thing does. Click OK, and then we'll start importing our slides. Go ahead and open up the folder that you used to make the pictures for your PowerPoint slides. Then select whichever slide you want to use. You're going to drag your slides from a folder to the project window in iMovie. Once iMovie looks like this, your lecture slides have been imported and you're ready to start the next step. You want to hold your cursor over one of those clips and then click on the settings button. You can see below for what it really looks like. And then you want to change the clip adjustments. The default's only four seconds, so what I do is I change the duration for 120 seconds. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll record our voiceovers, and then we'll remove the excess later. It's really, really easy. And you want to make sure you click Apply to All Stills. That'll do for the whole thing. Otherwise, you'll just apply it to that single still. All right, now it's time to start the voicing over. So what you want to do is open the record voiceover function which looks like a little microphone right down there in the middle now I really recommend that you get a really nice microphone 
the microphone on your computer is typically not very good, especially if you have a laptop. I actually use a setup where I have a rock band microphone and I actually have a ring stand with a chemical ring that we use for chemistry and some paper towels over it to keep me from actually puffing into the microphone. Uh, and it seems to work out okay, but the more expensive microphone you can use, the better. Also on this one, you want to kind of play around with maximizing the noise reduction and turning on voice enhancement. Um, these things kind of affect the overall quality. I'd play around with this one a little bit until you get it right. All right, when you're ready to record, you just place the cursor where you want to start recording and it'll count down. I recommend about a one second silent period per slide just for a nice transition. Uh, just makes it look a little bit nicer. And once you click, the microphone's live and you'll get a three, two, one recording and you're ready to go. Once you're finished speaking, you can click anywhere on the clip that you did the voice audio on and it'll stop recording. All right, the little purple bar down there is the voiceover audio clip. If you're not happy with it, you can actually just select it and then delete it and then keep doing it until you get the right take. Uh, I recommend doing that. Uh, there's a lot of times it doesn't sound right. If you do it really well, it sounds really, really good. And to do a second voiceover, you just put the cursor again right where you want it, typically at the very end of the original voiceover, and then you just click and repeat. And just do this as many times as you need to, and then you're finished with that slide. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to clip it. But first, close the voiceover function. Otherwise, you can't really work with the clip itself. At least in the version of iMovie I have, editing the first clip is a little glitchy. Uh, but we can manually shorten the clip to make it exactly the way we want. First thing you want to do is determine the length of your voiceover. Put your cursor right there towards the end of it. And you're going to look right where that red circle is, and that'll tell you exactly how many seconds it is. Mine says it's 40 seconds. And then we're going to click on the clip settings again, just like we did to change the duration to 120 seconds before. You're going to change the duration to the duration of your voiceover. So mine was 40 seconds. And you want this time you want to deselect applies to all stills because if you do that it's going to apply to all of them and you really only want to just change this one. That's it. Now we're just going to repeat this. Now you want to voice over the second slide exactly the same way you did the first slide. The way we are going to edit it is a little bit different, however. As it turns out, editing the remaining clips is a lot easier than the first one. All you're going to do is select the clip by clicking on it anywhere. Then you'll click on the beginning of the clip and then drag it towards the end of your voice recording. And then again, I recommend leaving about a one second buffer just for aesthetics. And the segment that's highlighted will be the one that we're going to delete in the next step. Then under the edit function, you're just going to click delete selection and that'll get rid of everything that has been highlighted. And then your clipped audio and video should look something like this. And just continue voicing all of your slides and you'll be ready to go. Continue voicing over the rest of your lecture slides until they're complete. Then the next step is to export the movie. So under the share button, you're going to click export movie. I recommend selecting the largest size that you can because it's accessible by many different kinds of platforms. Click export and it'll begin exporting. And this is what your movie will look like when it's being exported. All right, making a movie in iMovie is great, but it's not accessible by many different media platforms. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an MPG using another free software, MPEG, MPEG, Stream Clip. You'll need to download that and install it before you can begin. And all you're going to do is take the movie that's been exported by iMovie and drag it into that central window of MPEG Stream Clip. And once your movie populates within MPEG Stream Clip, it'll show your first image and you're ready to convert it. 
I recommend exporting to MPEG4 because basically any platform can read that. iPad, iPhone, PC, Macintosh, pretty much anything can read it. I recommend changing the quality to 100%. I mean, why not? It's set at 50%, so change that to 100%. You went through all this work to maximize the quality, might as well utilize it. And then all you gotta do is press make MP4 and you're ready to go. All you gotta do is name your movie, select where you want it to be stored, and then save it. Almost home, this is what it looks like when your video is being made. It usually takes a little while. That's it, it's really pretty easy. If you have any questions about how to make these movies, feel free to message me at my YouTube account, Urban Ecologist. Have a great day.